Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we've got some exclusive information on a new Ryzen 7 6800U powered handheld from a company called AOK -OK Zoe. I know these handheld names are getting a little out of hand, but in English this is pronounced AOK -OK Zoe. And the word AOK -OK stands for perfection, Zoe stands for sports life. It's no secret that the handheld gaming PC market has exploded in 2022. I mean, there is a ton of new handhelds coming to the market at the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023, and a lot of this has to do with the success of the Steam Deck. And I'm actually glad to see this. There's a lot of competition out there when it comes to pricing. You've got the budget-minded stuff when it comes to the lower-end handhelds that are going to be releasing at the end of 2022. And we've got the more powerful stuff coming out that's going to be using something like the Ryzen 7 6800U. And that's exactly what the AOK -OK Zoe is going to be using. So when it comes to the information I have so far, this is going to be running Windows 11, and it's also going to be capable of running SteamOS. I mean, we've got an x86 CPU here, so we'll be able to install a ton of different operating systems on it. Basically, if the operating system is available for an x86 platform, there's a chance we could get it to boot up on this thing. But, uh, you know, driver support is going to be a different story. This is using a newer 6000 series Ryzen APU with an RDNA 2 iGPU. This is going to offer some really great performance, and it's not going to be a small handheld. This is going to be utilizing an 8-inch IPS display at 1920 by 1200 And as you can see, the design itself is very reminiscent of the 1X player, the larger 1X player, not talking about the Mini here. It's slated to release July 2022, and this might be pushed back a little bit because we really just heard about the handheld itself. But all of the information I'm getting right now, launch time is July 2022, and that would be really nice to get this out of the door before a lot of the other handheld companies come out with their 6800U handhelds. But they don't need to rush it. Now, I will be getting my hands on a prototype very soon to do a lot of testing, so if there's anything you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below, be it an operating system, a certain game, an emulator, but what I plan on testing first is Windows 11 and SteamOS. We're definitely going to go through some PC games and some high-end emulation on this device. So what we've got here is a relatively large handheld powered by that Ryzen 7 6800U. Obviously, using that APU, we get those Radeon 680 graphics. It will be using LPDDR5X, and this is going to be running at 6400 megahertz. They're going to offer two different models, 16 or 32. You're probably going to see more of the 16 gigabyte model tested out everywhere. But, you know, to tell you the truth, going from 16 to 32 on this really isn't going to make a difference between the performance. 16 is more than enough for a handheld like this. It does have a built-in gyroscope, RGB, LED breathing lights right there in the palm rest. I do think this looks pretty good. This will be fully controllable from software. 8-inch IPS display at 1920 by 1200 rated at 100% sRGB, so it should be a really nice looking display. 283 pixels per inch with 380 nits of brightness. It will support night mode, so we can kind of turn that warm glow on. It's got a 48 watt hour battery. PD quick charging up to 100 watts, and if you're using a 100 watt charger with this, you can charge that battery in 1.5 hours. It's going to be using a PCIe M.2 NVMe SSD. It's going to be a 2280, so this can be replaced if you're brave enough to get in there and replace it with a larger drive. Comes standard with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. It's also going to support a micro SD card, and they're planning on releasing a keyboard and dock for this unit, but it's still a little early to say if it's going to release alongside the handheld itself or not. Now another thing we've already seen is a little bit of gameplay on a prototype unit, and I will have one in my possession very soon. I'll make a few videos, so if there's anything you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. But the company itself has released a few gameplay videos over on their official YouTube channel. They are using Forza Horizon 5, which is a very well-optimized game, and in my experience using this game, it does work really well on these Ryzen APUs. So as soon as I can get my hands on one, I will be testing a lot more on it. But from what they've showed off so far, at 1280 by 800 low quality and the TDP on this APU set at 15 watts, we can expect an average over 80 FPS, and this is fully playable. Personally, I think this game still looks great on a smaller display at 1280 by 800 low quality. But uh, they also ran some tests at that same TDP, so we're still at 15 watts, but they've swapped over to the high quality preset and it does drop under 60, and this is kind of a given with this APU running at 15 watts. When it comes to the built-in Radeon 680M iGPU, it can pull quite a lot of wattage. And you gotta remember that 15 watt TDP is shared between the CPU, and we have 8 cores there fighting that GPU for that power. So up in the TDP on the 6800U is really where it's at with those high quality presets. 
Or what's in the works right now from a few third-party applications is the ability to kind of park a few of these cores or totally disable some of these cores here so we don't need to send as much power to the CPU and in turn that GPU can use a little more at these lower TDPs. But they also did some testing at 1920 by 1200, low quality, still at 15 watts, and they also did some testing at 28 watts, which is really going to wake up the 6800U. And here's those tests at 28 watts. I know it's a little washed out. Uh, this was the best footage that I could get right now. But at low settings, 1280 by 800, and this setup at a 28 watt TDP, we can get over 100 FPS on average with Forza Horizon 5. But obviously, running this chip at a higher wattage will limit our battery life. We're going to get much less battery life out of it at 28 watts than we would at 15. But keep in mind, the frame rate is unlocked with all of these tests, and turning V-Sync on at 1280 by 800 low settings, this thing's only going to pull around 13 watts, and you're going to get a really smooth 60 FPS out of it. Here's the high quality test at 28 watts, and now instead of running under 60, we can get an average of around 73 FPS. So yeah, not bad at all, and keep in mind this game still has a couple more tweaks like resolution scale, that really helps out with these Ryzen APUs. And a lot of the other games that we'll be testing, we can also enable FSR. And the final test I wanted to take a look at here was uh, low settings, TDP at 28 watts, 1920 by 1200. They're getting an average over 70 FPS, but like I mentioned, turning V-Sync on with these handhelds is really the way to go. From the gameplay footage we've seen so far, it looks like it's going to be a great performer. And real quick, if we check out the back here, it does have that built-in kickstand. And I have to say it again, definitely looks like 1X might have had a hand in putting something like this together. And that's pretty awesome because they are a very well-known handheld gaming PC manufacturer and they've got the ties. So, you know, they could kind of get this out of the door really quickly with some decent quality control. And the final thing I wanted to talk about here is pricing. Unfortunately, I haven't had any word on pricing, but I can guarantee you that it's going to be more expensive than the Steam Deck, than the highest end model of the Steam Deck right now. Valve can afford to lose on the hardware because they're going to make it up on software sales. These companies here are hardware manufacturers and they need to make the money right up front. They don't have anything extra to sell you down the road. And I completely understand that a lot of people would just rather go with the Steam Deck and it's totally up to you. But I will be getting my hands on a prototype unit very soon so we can do some testing on it. And I will face it off against the Steam Deck's performance. If we can get SteamOS to run on this properly, then we should see much better performance than the Steam Deck can put out right now because we are working with much more powerful specs when it comes to the CPU and GPU in the AOK -OK Zoe. But yeah, I mean, that's about all the information I have right now. Definitely keep an eye on the channel. There will be more coming. If you're interested in learning more, maybe trying to get into their beta testing program, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Let me know your thoughts on this handheld in the comments below. Do you love the design? Do you hate it? Are you interested in a 6800U powered handheld or are you just going to wait till AMD releases something totally different? Personally, I do like the design here. I'm a big fan of these handhelds with the larger displays, but that D-pad will need to be tested out. It does look a bit funky, so we'll have to see once we get our hands on it. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.